Welcome to Grace Digital Presentation. In this video, we shall be discussing the ministry of Philip and Peter. As believers in this generation, we often do not look back into history to really appreciate the early disciples in the body of Christ, who went through every challenge, threat, and attack possible, just to be able to spread the gospel we now take for granted today. Here are two people that stand out. Number 1. Philip Philip was almost like a one-man band who became an evangelist, then preached in Samaria, and the one who later sent for Peter and John in Acts 8, 5-24 AMP. Philip the evangelist went down to the city of Samaria and began proclaiming Christ the Messiah, the anointed to them. The crowds gathered and were paying close attention to everything Philip said as they heard the message and saw the miraculous signs which he was doing, validating his message. For unclean spirits, demons, shouting loudly, were coming out of many who were possessed, and many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed. So there was great rejoicing in that city. Now there was a man named Simon, who previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria claiming to be someone great. They all paid a great deal of attention to him, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is what is called the great power of God. They were paying attention to him because for a long time he had mystified and dazzled them with his magic. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were being baptized both men and women. Even Simon believed Philip's message of salvation, and after being baptized, he continued on with Philip. And as he watched the attesting signs and great miracles taking place, he was constantly amazed. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. They came down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for he had not fallen on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus as his possession. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them one by one, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this authority and power too, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your money be destroyed along with you, because you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this matter, because your heart, motive, purpose is not right before God. So repent of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord, that if possible, this thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are provoked by bitterness and bound by sin. But Simon answered, Pray to the Lord for me, both of you, so that nothing of what you have said will come upon me. These apostles were empowered and driven by the Holy Spirit to be resilient in the face of very harsh conditions. Every continent received the seed of the gospel of Jesus that we now enjoy today because of their boldness and commitment. For instance, Philip in Acts 8, 26-40 AMP received an angel's direction to go and meet an Ethiopian leader. This is believed to be the beginning of the gospel invasion to Africa. Later, the Spirit of the Lord again led him to yet another place where he continued preaching the gospel of Christ. Acts 8, 26-40 AMP says, But an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go south to the road that runs from Jerusalem down to Gaza. This is a desert road. So he got up and went, and there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a man of great authority, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians who was in charge of all of her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and he was returning and sitting in his chariot 
he was reading the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Then the Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go up and join this chariot. Philip ran up and heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah, and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, Well, how could I understand, unless someone guides me correctly? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now this was the passage of scripture which he was reading. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he does not open his mouth. In humiliation his judgment was taken away, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch replied to Philip, Please tell me, about whom does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip spoke, and beginning with this scripture, he preached Jesus to him, explaining that he is the promised Messiah and the source of salvation. As they continued along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch exclaimed, Look, water, what forbids me from being baptized? Philip said to him, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he replied, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered that the chariot be stopped, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip and carried him away, to a different place, and the eunuch no longer saw him. But he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the good news of salvation to all the cities, until he came to Caesarea, Maritima. Number 2. Peter Just like Philip, Peter was also directed by the Holy Spirit on where to go and preach in several places in the Bible. Acts 10, 1-48 AMP says, Now at Caesarea, Maritima, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian Regiment, a devout man, and one who, along with all his household, feared God. He made many charitable donations to the Jewish people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour, 3 p.m., of the day, he clearly saw in a vision an angel of God who had come to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius was frightened and stared intently at him and said, What is it, Lord, sir? And the angel said to him, Your prayers and gifts of charity have ascended as a memorial offering before God, an offering made in remembrance of his past blessings. Now send men to Joppa and have them call for a man named Simon, who is also called Peter, and invite him here. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who was speaking to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among his own personal attendants. And after explaining everything to them, he sent them to Joba. The next day, as they were on their way and were approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof of the house about the sixth hour, noon, to pray. But he became hungry and wanted something to eat. While the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance, and he saw the sky opened up and an object like a great sheet descending, lowered by its four corners to the earth. And it contained all kinds of four-footed animals and crawling creatures of the earth and birds of the air. A voice came to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not at all, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common, unholy, and ceremonially unclean. And the voice came to him a second time, What God has cleansed and pronounced clean, no longer consider common unholy. This happened three times, and then immediately the object was taken up into heaven. Now Peter was still perplexed and completely at a loss as to what his vision could mean. When the men who had been sent by Cornelius, having asked directions to Simon's house, arrived at the gate, 
and they called out to ask whether Simon, who was also called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was thoughtfully considering the vision, the Spirit said to him, Now listen, three men are looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitating or doubting, because I have sent them myself. Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. For what reason have you come? They said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, well spoken by all the Jewish people, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and hear what you have to say. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging for the night. The next day, Peter got up and left with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa went with him. On the following day, he and the others entered Caesarea. Cornelius was waiting for them, and had called together his relatives and close friends. When Peter arrived, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter raised him up, saying, Stand up, I too am only a man. As Peter talked with him, he entered the house and found a large group of people assembled. He said to them, you know that it is unlawful for a Jewish man to associate with or befriend a Gentile, or to visit him. And yet God has shown me that I am not to call anyone common or ceremonially unclean. Therefore, when I was sent for, I came without raising an objection. So I ask for what reason have you sent for me? Cornelius said, Four days ago to this hour, I was praying in my house during the ninth hour, 3 to 4 p.m., and a man dressed in bright, dazzling clothing suddenly stood before me, and he said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your acts of charity have been remembered before God, so that he is about to help you. Therefore, sent word to Joppa and invite Simon, who is also called Peter, to come to you. He is staying at the house of Simon the Tanner by the sea. So I sent for you at once, and you have been kind enough to come. Now then, we are all here present before God to listen to everything that you have been instructed by the Lord to say. Opening his mouth, Peter said, Most certainly, I understand now that God is not one to show partiality to people as though Gentiles were excluded from God's blessing. But in every nation, the person who fears God and does what is right, by seeking Him, is acceptable and welcomed by Him. You know the message which He sent to the sons of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know the things that have taken place throughout Judea, starting in Galilee after the baptism preached by John. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with great power. And he went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, because God was with him. We are personally eyewitnesses of everything that he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem in particular. They also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. God raised him to life on the third day and caused him to be plainly seen, not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen and designated beforehand by God, that is, to us who ate and drank together with him, after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people, both Jew and Gentile, and to solemnly testify that he is the one who has been appointed and ordained by God, as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that through his name, Everyone who believes in Him, whoever trusts in and relies on Him, accepting Him as Savior and Messiah, and receives forgiveness of sins. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who were listening to the message, confirming God's acceptance of Gentiles. All the circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them talking in unknown tongues, languages, and exalting and magnifying and praising God. Then Peter said, 
Can anyone refuse water for these people to be baptized, since they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? And he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay there for a few days. Ordinarily, Peter wouldn't have gone to Cornelius' house to preach, because Cornelius was a Gentile, but because God doesn't discriminate like men do. He gave Peter the permission through that trance that Peter had to preach there, and we saw the impact of the preaching on both Cornelius and on everyone that was present in the house. This act of obedience also began a wave of salvation experience in the midst of those that weren't Jews as they also got to understand how much God loved them and how the death of Jesus also grafted them into God's family. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the gift of committed and passionate disciples like Philip and Peter in the early church after the ascension of Christ. Thank you because their seeds of time, energy, resources, and obedience are all evident in the body of Christ today. In the name of Jesus, I ask that I will also be inspired to also dedicate myself to your purposes for the benefit of generations to come. Amen.